Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Thaddeus Shade. You're listening to Seasonable Clout. It's Wednesday, October 4th. It's Wednesday, October 4th, 2023. And I said the date just in case I found out that I hit the lottery and I won a billion dollars and then I was able to get my body frozen because the scientists, they were off in some cave in Antarctica and they was like, oh shit, we need to freeze more black people. And I was one of the black people that had some money. And it was like, we're going to freeze you and you'll be able to wake up 150 years from now. And I need to be able to hear myself from today. So I need to put the date on it. So I know what the hell is going on. Okay. That, that's a that's a bit of a stretch, but you know what I'm you know you know what I'm saying. But it's Wednesday, it's October fourth. It's 2023. It's fall time. It's a uh, you know it's a high 90s, an AZ, maybe touch a hundred here and there, maybe touch a hundred. You know what I'm saying? But it's a spooky season, and you know I'm off and running with spooky season. But before we go 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 go, let's talk about what I got going on at 1111 Nightclub. Tomorrow, singer and actor Ray J will be in the building along with Bobby Brackens. We will give that a round of applause. (laughs) Again, Ray J, Bobby Brackens in the building tomorrow. Then Friday night, we have the Liquor Olympics. I don't really know what we doing with the, the Liquor Olympics, but it sounds like motherfuckers will be cooked motherfuckers will be fried. So if you would like to come out and have a good time and, and, and sample liquors, you're more than welcome to come join me. Now, Saturday night is the ASU versus Colorado after party at 11-11. Yes, I'm there all weekend, by the way. I'm a, uh, I'm a promoter. I'm there, uh, I'm there all weekend. So come see me. But Saturday night, the ASU versus Colorado after party uh, I know we do have, I, it's, it's a shame. We do have a DJ from Colorado opening up that night. And I know there's a lot of folks going to be in town because prime time coming and they playing the sun devils and, and, and the buffaloes is, is big news. You know what I'm saying? The buffalo is big news. You know, I, I, I'm assuming, um, it's, you know, the, the Prime is the same type of big news if you heard uh, Obama has slapped Trump in the face. That's big news. Like, oh, shit. That's how big Colorado Buffalo is because of prime time. And they'll be in the city, um, Tempe, uh, to be exact. Uh, this Saturday, the game is happening. We'll have the after party at 11-11. And then Sunday night, we have rapper Kamaya in the building who will be performing live. She'll be performing live. So you can come out. That's free all night on Sunday. You can come out, see her rap. And that's what I got going on at 11-11 this Sunday. Oh, Sunday night. Oh. Now, let's take a sip of my coffee. Um, I told y'all it's spooky season, right? Spook, 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 spook season. Ooh. And uh, wait, I forgot to, you know, damn, I played myself, man. Y'all know I played myself. How I, I told you, I don't really do intros no more. I don't do the whole, I just get right into it, but I have a little sound I like to play. And now, sound of your shade. That's not what I normally do, but I figured, you know, I got the coffee running through me. I add a little spice to that shit. But uh, it is spooky season, and I did slide off um, to see Saw X Sunday. You know, last episode, as I'm getting back into the groove of it, like I told you last week, I had been gone for a long time, and now I'm getting my thing back. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you, you know, you want a dry spell, and as a guy, you got to get your hip flex. You got to get your hip game right. And if your hip game ain't right, your thrust game ain't right. That means if you rusty... Your thrusty is crusty. Yeah, if you if you if you're rusty, your hip game fuck. I fucked it up. Anyway, it's it's crusty. It's rusty, thrusty, and crusty. It's fucked up, but it, but you know what I'm saying. But basically, I slid off. <laughs> I slid off from doing a podcast, and then I um, I'm back, and now I'm uh 
on to my second episode. And then this Monday I went to go see Saul X. And now y- y'all know that I've in the past, I've talked about being a TV and movie aficionado. I consider myself to be a connoisseur, a person that um, explores all types of movies. I don't watch pretty much anything. Television shows, I watch pretty much anything. I'm a little weird when it comes to, you know, um, racial type movies because they put me in a t- certain type of space. You know, I start practicing my backhand and, you know what I'm saying? I start looking at, you know, and you'll never mind. We don't need to get it, <laughs> get it all that. But uh, as a movie goer, um, who in the in 2020 time despised all the movies that were dropping 2020, 2021, all the movies that were dropping at the time, I despised it. I hated being at home watching movies, watching movies at the crib. I hated it. I missed the germ handled door you would touch to go into the movie theater right 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 i missed buying all the overpriced concession stand candy and popcorn and soda the occasional soda and if you want to be healthy you get a bottle of water but it would cost you eight dollars for the bottle of water and if you asked You go to a right theater and you ask them for a cup of water. They would frown upon you because you want some free shit at a place that everything is times 10 to buy. Shame on you. But I missed it. Being able to go inside before the movie start. Sit down. Into a, I don't know, a cloth cushiony seat. Now the leather. The leather now. Most of the places they're leather. You can shit down anywhere. They're leather. They're they're nice. You know the texture's nice. But no, you could, you know, at the time you, you know, the cloth. You didn't have the layback. You know, seeing your chair may rock a little bit, but you didn't have the layback like a Maybach. You didn't have the layback like a Maybach when you're in the theater now. Back then, the seats was like some type of fucked up old '80s carpet, and you only had a little bit of rocking. But I loved it. You could get lice. There's a special type of dandruff you can get off of that cloth. That was a special time. I enjoyed it. And, you know, the vid happened and everything came home. Movies came home. They came inside. But now, three years later, going on four years later, you can go and get your experience back. You can spend all your money on popcorn. Hmm. It's the small things you got to enjoy. You got to find those pockets of small things you enjoy. And I enjoy the theater. I do enjoy my shows, but I enjoy the theater experience. So I was able to slide off to Saw X. Now, to impress me, man. To be nine, ten movies in, I don't know why I re- saying nine, I know Saw X is supposed to mean ten, but I had read an article that they were nine in, and it, like I said, it put them with company of like Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street, you know what I'm saying, and Black Booty 17, you know what I'm saying, that last movie wasn't necessarily a movie, that was special time movie, but they made a lot of them Black Booty 17s. And the Black Booty Talk, there was a lot of them. You had to be around for that time. And it was VCR and it was, you know, never mind. But uh, it, it, to be nine, ten deep in a, in a franchise, I'm going to tell y'all something. We're nine, ten deep in a franchise. Much like Fast and the Furious, you know. Um, if you've seen the Saws, they got Final destination the killings, they all became about the killings and the killings got weird and super gory. And then you saw a comedian get serious and be a detective. And, you know, which wasn't a bad, you know, watch Siri say something. I know she, see, you, you say anything with an S and she gonna come running. 
I ain't even talking to her. But she gonna come running. You said something with an S? I'm here. I'm here. Anyway. So, you know, the franchise got a really, you know, it was really strange. I read off all the, you know, Rotten Tomatoes and audience reviews last week. But I was excited to see it. I'm a fan. I like, I like Saw. I like the original. Big fan. So I was excited. And I'll tell you this. I was not let down. Not one bit. Now Rotten Tomato, it had it at 85%. That always blows my mind. I'm always excited when a horror movie gets a great rating from Rotten T. And I believe in Rotten T. I hang my hat on Rotten T. I don't know any. I, I had read. Oh, damn. I forgot. Oh, it was Rush Hour. Rush Hour was the movie that pretty much created Rotten Tomato. Now, I got to go get the backstory. We'll talk about that later. I don't remember, but that was the movie that Rush Rush Hour created Rotten Tomato. However that story happened, I'll find it. I'll talk to you. I'll do it in story time. It'll be like this. How Rotten Tomato was created. It'd be something like that. You can fuck with me. It'd be something like that. But we went, I went to go see Saw X. And then, like I said, I was not disappointed at all. John Kramer hit the screen. That's Jigsaw, if you don't know. This was totally different. Now, I ain't going to spend a lot of time because I got other things to get to. But this was a totally different movie. They showed you the... They showed... So... Uh, I was trying to... Do I... Uh, spoil? Do I spoil that shit? I don't know if I'll spoil it. Let me take a sip of the coffee, then I'll think about it. How about this? They explore more of John Kramer, who is Jigsaw. They explore his whole, like a, a lot of his journey through cancer. Obviously, that you know, through the previous movies, he's gonna die from cancer. And he ends up dying. Right? Cancer. But they show you him trying to beat cancer and what he was going through to get to the point of beating cancer. Now, he's still jigsaw through this process. That, I did spoil that shit on you. I'm sorry about that. He's still jiggy while he's going through the process of, you know, figuring out how he can possibly beat cancer. And that journey it's cool to see they show you him it's a lot of him it ain't it ain't the puppet on the old tricycle that only uh you could see in the shining you know you know what i'm saying this is real this is real john kramer so i love the fact that you see and i love the thing about television and movies where writers take whether he was he or she was the good person and they turn them bad, but somehow you still root for the bad. And that's what they do with this movie. How can you root for somebody or kind of understand? Y'all, how can you understand and root for a person who fucking sucks people's eyeballs out through a tube? It's crazy to be in a theater and feel that way. I was like, this is impressive. And for that, we will give a round of applause. As I always say, as I always say, if a movie is good, go spend the ducats on it. If it's trash, I'll tell you to stay away from it. But you could go spend your money. You could go spend your ducats. Your hard-earned money. You don't know how hard I has to work for this money. You go spend your hard earned ducats on Saw X and you will not be disappointed at all. Really good horror movie. Uh, good gory movie. But it fits for Halloween because it's fall time. Have I had more pumpkin spice? Yes, I have. <laughs> 
have I had more pumpkin spice? Kawhi, come talk to him. <laughs> I have. I have. Because it's fall, man. I can't, I'm going to say it every time I do an episode. It's fall, man. It's Halloween, man. It's, it's spooky season. Last night, and now, as I tell y'all this, don't, don't judge me. All right? Now, listen. I'm sharing something with y'all. It's between me and y'all. And y'all can't go telling nobody about this, all right? But I watched Haunted Mansion 2 last night, right? Because I'm continuing, you know, I'm continuing, you know, doing my Halloween activity. That's what I do. So Monday, I seen Salsies, right? I seen Salsies on, on Monday. Those fucking guys, I seen them on fucking Monday. Two, Tuesday fucking yesterday, I seen fucking... Uh, Fucking Haunted Mansion? What? You know, tonight is American Horror Story and Catfish. and <laughs> Catfish fits because you never know what you're going to see. You know, somebody, could, it could be a, a a person in love with an absolute dime beautiful of a woman. And then Terry opens up the door. And Terry also has a three-legged dog who is dressed like a woman, too. You never know on Catfish. So that shit fits right into the Halloween Scene. Wow. Now, I did watch Haunted Mansion 2 last night. And I've, I, what I'm keeping, the, the secret we got to stay together with is I've never seen, I've never seen, oh Lord, I've never seen the original Haunted Mansion. Sorry, I missed it. I, I've never seen the the first haunted mansion. Sorry, I missed it. I know, I know. Is Eddie. Shade, you a black man, man. How the hell are you gonna disrespect Eddie like that? I know, man. And Eddie's Eddie's my all-time favorite comedian. That's my guy. Eddie called me right now and said, man, I need you to come do security for me. And we going, we rolling through Compton. We're going to be wearing some gang colors. I need you to do security for me. I'm going to do security for, for Eddie Murphy. He said, man, I'm going to need you to take a bullet and I'm going to do the laugh for you. I'm going to take the bullet for Eddie Murphy because he's going to do the laugh. As long as I survive, I'll be able to hear the laugh. Eddie Murphy's my guy. How have I not seen Haunted Mansion? Sorry, I missed it. I don't know. But I watched number two last night. And it was okay. It was okay. But I'm keeping the spooky energy going. As an adult, you get to enjoy more because you control a lot of your own options and decisions, right? As a kid, you know, you don't get to control as much. You don't have the dollars. You, you know, you, you can't go buy the costume that you want. You got to hope that your, your mom and your dad are able to afford those things. For me now, I, right after spooky season, you telling me Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah. I enjoy, I enjoy the holiday seasons. I enjoy all this. I soak it all in. The energy is different. It's positive. It's, you know, it's, it, it feels better. So I enjoy it. And as we embark on the journey of pumpkin spice lattes or pumpkin spice Chai lattes, we must remember this shit's still expensive. <laughs> I'm racking up money. We went to we went to Trader Joe's yesterday. Y'all gonna think I'm insane, but I uh purchased, you know, Trader Joe's. I'm I was put on by Trader Joe's. My lady put me on the Trader Joe's. All right, she put me on. TikTok is, is Trader Joe's and TikTok, they go together. This Trader Joe's is a thing on there. So she put me on to 
to the Joes. I never fuck with the Joes. I see the Joes. I don't, I don't even fuck with the Joes. When you vegan, I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't know about Joes. I be at Whole Foods and Sprouts, and I know some of y'all got some negative things about to say about them places, but that's where I be at. Whole food, sprout, that's my spot. That's where I'm at all the time. Then you catch me there in my aisles. I used to talk about it back in my past episodes. Y'all talk, you know how I feel about whole foods. That's my spot. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Don't have no conversations with me. I'm shopping in whole foods. I don't know if I want some vitamins or some type of extremely healthy cheese. Vegan cheese. And let me tell you something. Vegan cheese is disgusting. I'm just saying. If you can avoid vegan cheese, do it. Do it. Don't try it. But <laughs> I'm in the zone and that shit costs a lot of money, man. So we went to Trader Joe's and I had uh, I bought um this oat milk, pumpkin oat milk drink. It was like chocolate milk, but it was pumpkin version and I know all that shit. And it's like some pumpkin puree. It's cool because you can really read the ingredients. And, then, you know, when you're getting some plant-based, some vegan stuff, they the, the ingredients sometimes is super plain for you. And they're pretty cool with just telling you where the poison is at. So I'm reading all the good healthy stuff. It's like, oh, pumpkin puree and, and oat milk and a little salt and some shit like that. And at the bottom, it says like that gulum, julium, whatever it is. And it's like parentheses around it. You know that this shit is poison. But it's still going to taste good. That's cool, man. That's what, you know what I'm saying. Plant based, vegan. They say, "Hey, look, look at all this clean shit." And at the bottom, we're gonna be honest with you. This is poison. This is poison. <laughs> 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 what to move on, man? Uh, today they had the uh, national broadcast alert. So you know, I'm trying to get in shape. You know, I'm trying. I'm trying to be somebody's, you know, some action hero stunt double. Mainly Michael B. I'm trying to get to that sign. I'm trying to get that cut. Basically, he'd be like, you know, Thad, I need somebody to go ahead and take these lumps and bruises. I'm like, B, come on, man. I got you, man. I could tuck, roll, and get smacked in the face easy, man. I got the body for it now. That's why I be in the gym. He said, you be in the gym now? I said, man, I be in the gym. Sometimes. He was, <laughs> but that's what... I was in the gym today. I was doing my thing. You know, I was, I was doing my cardio and, you know, I was doing back and buys today. I was, I was working. And as I was on the Stairmaster, the, the, the broadcast system went off. It was loud. It scared me. I was in a panic. Nobody was there to protect me. I forgot it was happening. It happened around 11, 18. I think that's the time it went off. You know, it was one other person in the gym with me. And, you know, because I, I go to my apartment gym because, you know, when the duckets ain't hitting right, you ain't got time to be spending no shit or no extra shit. So I was in the gym with another person. I got two phones. So then my phone went off. And then my my business phone went off. Right. And then my watch went off. And then they got TVs in there. So then, you know, Stephen A and them. They had like warnings up on the top and and then some shows had just been taken off and it was strictly about the broadcast system. And I was like, oh, that shit worked. That shit worked. So all the alien activity that we've been having forever, whenever they decide to really act a fool and to come with the beams and the lasers, in the flash, you know, the, the, the flash type ships. That's my that's my sound effect for something that's moving really fast. That's that's what I do. You should see me when I do my moves as visualization. So I'm going side to side. Y'all can't see me. So yeah, I think about it. So I'm side to side with it. So but, you know, when they decide to do that, that's what they're going to hit when they get here. You know, and Captain Hillard from Independence Day, he got to show up and help, but that's what they're going to push so we all can get alerted. Now, I had did like a little looking. So they said, so basically I had just clicked and asked some shit about the broadcast. Just roll with a brother. I'm going to try to school y'all a little bit. And it this has, 
you know, done this before, of course. This is the seventh time that they've, uh, a, a nationwide test has happened. And before it was sent through radio and television broadcasters. So you would have somebody that was probably not black sit up there and tell you, you know, hey, this is what's happening. It's just a test. Fam, don't get under the desk. Remember as a kid when you was when I was in Kansas City back home, when they do a like an earthquake, even though they listen, ain't no earthquakes back home, but they would have us do drills for earthquakes just in case. And we had to get under the desk. Let me tell y'all what they used to do for tornadoes, man. So for tornadoes, check this out. They would have us all go into the hallway because tornadoes are a real thing back in the Midwest, just in case anybody didn't know. I'm not saying y'all not smart, but I wanted to put y'all on if you didn't know. They would have us, they would do the siren in the school. And that's the siren. And it sounded like a cat. So then you they would get us and it was line us up. And we go out in the hallway. <laughs> into the to the hallway and then they would just tell us to sit up against the wall and then just duck your head in your laps i said oh what about the tornado is gonna come and it's gonna twirl everything and everything gonna hit us and then we gonna be hurt they said get up against the wall i said i've done that before because i'm black i'm black kid so i know how to get up against the wall that's what they want to do when they want to search you but they said get up against the wall but you back up against the wall and then slide down and then take your, take your head and tuck it into your lap and then cover your head. I, even as a kid, I was like, this is going to get me killed. This is the best you can do. In a state where tornadoes are prone to happen, this is what we have as an option. It was the 90s. We was trying. I don't know if things have changed much. I hope so, because that was the option. The hallway head. Duck. Anyway, <sighs> but this is only the third nationwide test of the wireless emergency alerts. So this is the third time. This is the third time when they've done it with wireless. So like, you know, we got in text and shit, you know, to the phone. Uh, the most recent test run of both systems took place in 2021. The first ever test of the emergency alert system occurred more than a decade ago in 2011. Now, I was curious because the government is the government. I was wondering, have they ever done this by mistake before? And there have been multiple high profile mistakes attributed to errors at the state level. Hmm. I think they said the most famous one was like 2018 misfire in Hawaii. I don't remember that one. I was, you know, I was in, you know, back in 2018, I was, you know, I was doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was out there in my Cadillac. You know what I'm saying? I had the gangster lean. You know what I'm saying? The grill was real clean. You know? Okay. Okay. But the, you know, there was the Hawaii one that set off a wave of panic across the state. And that was, uh, that was 2018, January 13, 2008. A Hawaii state emergency management worker accidentally pushed. Oh, he accidentally pushed the wrong button. So this is a really a button. You ever think about things like you ever think in like uh, think about nuclear bombs? You know what I'm saying? And like I don't know why because I think about technology. I'm like it ain't no way. There's really still just a button. It may like even if you got the two key thing turn and it's just a button. I like to think, because I had seen that, did I talk about this last week? I'm not for sure. But I had seen that the president has a, how can I put this? A nuclear bomb plane, right? He has a nuclear bomb plane. Uh, I think it's like a $4 billion plane. And this plane has everything. I guess it can fly in the air for a week. And they can also keep refueling it up in the air. So it can fly around a week. Is They said it's, Practically indestructible. And they said, if you ever see the plane flying in the air, you're dead. So basically it was like this. If you look up and, and you hear 
the sirens going off that we just got tested with today. And then you just happen to be the person that goes outside and sees that one plane that you ain't never seen before. And it looks so pretty and shiny. And you say, oh, that's the president logo. Just know that that's the plane that's telling you that you did. Because whatever is happening and he's in the plane, the, the dude that trip up the stairs all the time, if he's in the plane and his family's in the plane and other people in there that be doing lines of coke and all that stuff they be talking about is in the plane, you're fried. You're done for. Absolutely done for. Which is kind of, kind of wild. I didn't know about that plane until I read about it. I was thoroughly impressed. But anyway, they had one earlier this year in Florida, state emergency management official. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can read. This ain't what I usually do. Uh, Florida state emergency management officials issued an apology after Floridians, Flor- Floridians, that's what it is. I still can read. We're awoken at 4.45 a.m. by a test emergency alert sent to their phones. So they have fucked this up before. It's been a lot of accidents when it comes to it. But it was cool. It was cool to, you know, to be a part of, like, it's not many times that you get to be a part with everybody in, in, in the United States at one time. COVID connected the world. We was all doing the same shit. Even if we was on a different time zone, we was doing the same shit. And then just for a brief 20 minutes, I think the system, the, the sound didn't last that long. But for that brief second, the United States was one. It was, it was, we were one. You know what I'm saying? Everybody looked, the person that was buying crack at the time stopped and said, oh shit, it's the test. Hold on, let me finish this before I buy the crack. (laughs) 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 See, you get a little knowledge, you get a little, a little strangeness. You get a little weirdness when you do with me, but I, I don't know, like I said, it was cool, man. At that one moment, we're all getting the same thing. It's kind of cool. I remember back in the day, they did the whole thing where they tried to have the world touch hands. I think I wasn't a bit a part of that. I'm not a really good people person like that, even though I know what my job is, but ah, I think it was back in the eighties. So like, nah, I'm watching TV. MTV is probably on if I could afford it. If we could afford it as a family, I wouldn't listen. I wasn't functioning. Hold on. Before, see, this is what I'm talking about. I wasn't functioning properly in the 80s because I was born, but I, you know, really functioning and knowing shit. That's why I grew up in the 90s. All right. But it happened in the 80s. I think they wanted everybody to go out there and hold hands. They try to connect hands around the world. And that's some shit that we should have tried to do when it was COVID, but we couldn't, obviously. But that sound like what that idea was a whole I'm bored. Let's try to get the world to do some things. And we were just bored and that because that's stupid as fuck. But I would never participate in the hand holding world event. I would never have done that. Just letting y'all know that. Um, so I'm gonna finish up on something that I think is cool, but not cool. You know what I'm saying? It's really, really cool, but not cool, you know. Um If you are in Kansas City, Missouri, not Kansas, don't do this. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. All right? It's not Toto. It's Missouri. Ozarks. Right? You remember the show? You remember how gangster that was? It's Missouri. Pump. Anyway, um, if you are in Kansas City and you lady, sir, or a Chiefs fan, you are being exposed to high levels of Taylor Swift. Now, I do find myself saying that I'm a Swifty. I'm still a G. I'm still backhand you. 
but I find myself being a Swifty. Now, I don't know all the records, but I don't mind Swifty. You know, uh, I think that's what, ain't that what they call Swifties? Let me get a sip of this coffee real quick. Um, I think that's what they're called though, right? Swifties? I guess I can look it up real quick. Hold on, let me see. Let me see. What do they call Taylor Swift's fans? Let's see here. Swifties, see? Nigga knows something. <laughs> now, like I was saying, if you're in Kansas City, I'm sorry. That's just stupid. Well, I, wait, 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 wait. You're probably getting into worse. If you're a Chiefs fan in general, you're probably, and if you're an NFL fan, you're probably, but if you're in Kansas City, you're probably really, really, really tired. Of seeing Taylor Swift. But. But. There's got to be a little bit of. What if I run into her at the Piggly Wiggly? You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people. Like when it comes to the NFL. A lot of, a lot of these guys. They're not. Dating big. Like Taylor Swift. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this is an actress here. A model here, but nothing like Taylor Swift. So there is a little bit of I'm tired of seeing this woman on my TV screen and on every billboard I drive past. There she is waving her hands. She's taking over in Kansas. I'm sure that's what they show on the news. Any chance they get say, oh, they say, oh, number 87 called a pass. They they don't even call him Kelsey no more. Swift boyfriend called called a pass. I said, that's great, Travis Kelsey. He's like, nah, that's Swift boyfriend. You talking about him right there? That's 87? That's Swift boyfriend. He just caught a pass for 17 yards from Patrick Mahomes. I said, that's Travis Kelsey. He said, nah, that's Swift boyfriend. But fuck with me on this. You could be tired of it. But there's got to be a little bit of excitement. Like, what if I run into her at the Price Chopper? You know what I'm saying? These are stores back on grocery stores. What if I run into her at the Piggly Wiggly? That's kind of cool. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, it's like, uh, let's see here. Uh, let me see if I can come up with a scenario. Uh, Jay-Z, Beyonce, become majority owners of the Cardinals. Right? That's all we're going to see. Is Beyonce is a majority. not minority because I'm a mind you know what I'm saying like you little piece you got a little corner of the, of the team that means you ain't really you ain't really you know what I'm saying you just making some bread but if you majority I can really make some calls make some decisions around here that means that they're more than likely gonna be here a lot and you have to ask yourself will I run into Beyonce at the fries is that possible? Could that really happen? Did I run in to be at the fries and she sees me? She's like, oh, hey, sugar. And I run up to her and I, I say, Beyonce, you really at the fries? And she say, yeah, sugar, I'm really here. I say, damn, what you getting? She's all oh, just some sugar. I say, can I have a hug? She say, yes, you can. And I hug Beyonce inside the fries. And we just hold each other for 20 minutes. And I tell her, don't shop here. Go to Whole Foods. That's the better place to go. Don't, don't be coming into this fries, especially the one on South Phoenix down at 24th Street. Don't go into that motherfucker. It's small, it's compact, it's busy all the time. Don't go down there. And then I would leave. But there's a little bit of excitement when you have that type of celebrity high profile you may be a little bit more prone to be like yeah it's cool i heard that they're adding a swift tax i would do it fuck it you know what i'm saying you buy a ticket now at the chiefs game and then you go down your receipt you scrolling down your receipt you're like okay yeah and you see swift tax what the fuck is 
the Swift. Now, hood niggas, you know, hood motherfuckers gonna be like, what the fuck is the Swift tag, cuz? I just got done hitting nigga for 500 this dice game. I wanna take my little son to the game. What the fuck is the Swift tax? He don't know. That's Taylor Swift. It's a Swift tax now. Cause now, every time the Chiefs play, it goes like this kickoff. The game is being played. Four minutes into the game, Taylor Swift. Chiefs get the ball on offense. Mahomes to Taylor Swift's boyfriend. 17-yard pass. Shot of Taylor Swift. The Chiefs score. Shot of Taylor Swift with number 87's mama. More Taylor Swift. Commercial. Football, fumble by the Chiefs, shot of Taylor Swift. She said, because the Chiefs just fumbled. That's a boyfriend team. And now they take all them damn shots of her. They put on the NFL Network. They put on ESPN. And then you just looked up and the whole NFL is Taylor Swift. We don't even know about Kelsey right now. Kelsey's a legendary football player. They don't even talk about that dude. He done became he carrying the coats like the, the black dude that that be with Chris Jenner. Hey brother, listen, this between me and you. Get your ducats. I know you was getting bread a little bit, a little bit of bread before you got there, but now you good. And Anybody in your family that has kids is good. And it just becomes generational, they good. So if you got to carry some purses or some bags, you got to smile on TV, and nobody knows your name, that's okay. Because I see you. I see the move you made, sir. And over here, Seasonable Clout, We're proud of you, black man. But like I'm saying, nobody even knows that it's Travis Kelsey anymore. My boy Gustavo Montes. Gustavo! If you go, he's got his podcast. I just told you his name. Look it up. Listen to it. He had put into our fantasy basketball chat. It was a screenshot of the Twitter for the NFL. (sighs) Can't make this up, y'all. I can't make this up. The Twitter for the NFL, the banner at the top, when you put a picture up there, not your profile picture, but the banner behind it. You know, you want to, if you are, uh, you know, a sorority girl, you may post the banner of your whole sorority girls and then y'all are throwing up or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. You want to post something up there. It's all Taylor Swift. It's pictures of Taylor Swift, bro. It's crazy because I know do you and I don't be tripping. I told you I'm a Swifty. You know what I'm saying? We're getting Swifty in here. But I know there are some good hard working men out there some good wife beater bud drinking men out there they can't stand this shit they already got a they got a bubble wrap around a quarterback right i already know where y'all are at i'm gonna do it for you they already got a bubble wrap around a quarterback you can't touch them now as you guzzle down your poisonous Bud to Bud Light to Miller to Miller Light. You have to look up and see Taylor Swift in a game between fucking Chicago and fucking who's it just played? Chicago and somebody. They was both 0-3. I think it was Chicago and the Vikings. It was somebody that just played. You got to look up through that trash game and you got to see Taylor Swift matter of fact I take that back if you was watching that game for them 0-3 games and you saw Taylor Swift you're probably like ah that's not that bad because this game 
This game is yucky. It's two zero and three teams. It's probably a yucky thing to watch. But just think about it. You know what I'm saying? If it's the rivalry, you see Oakland. You see, I'm sorry. You see the Las Vegas Raiders, and you see the Chiefs, and they playing. It's a grimy game because they're rivals. They hate each other. We're not. We don't like each other. I don't like you, Miriam. That's my homegirl. She's in my fantasy basketball chat, but we don't like each other when we play. She's a Raiders fan. I am a Chiefs fan. Hello, Patrick. Right? They don't like each other. Can you imagine the griminess of it? Being covered by Taylor Swift, 60% of the game. Like, what the fuck? I mean, what the fuck? (laughs) You just look up, and that's what happened. And I know that's good for the sport of football. I mean, let's think about it. Basketball, court size is a popular thing. You know what I'm saying? At one point, they had a basketball team in Vancouver. And people bought tickets for courtside. I've never been to Vancouver, but hmm, you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Toronto, straight, he'd have made it cool. That's Ronto. You could buy courtside tickets there. That's Ronto. But at one point, it was a team, the Vancouver Grizzlies. And people used to buy courtside tickets tickets there that kind of tells you something the the nba is filled with stars on the sideline does it matter where where your team plays there's going to be some type of heavyweight over there tycoon big rich motherfuckers and celebrities it's going to be one or two don't let it be a very popular team there's going to be a lot it's like um, what Prime is doing for Colorado. Got celebrities pulling up left and right. Messi did for Miami when Messi came over here. Eh? That guy, he came over kicking that ball over the place. Eh, it's for the celebrities filling up the place. Football, they give you a shot here and there. But there's, there's, I'm not saying it's not celebrities there, but it ain't. They don't. Gorn, like it's not you don't get a lot of attention when the celebrities they give them a shot there it is but basketball riddled with them they show them they show them before the break they show them after the break it's halftime you see them cameras it's just a lot of visuals it's courtside so you get seen a lot more in football you got you know you got the box everybody's up top it's in the box you know what I'm saying and you look up Taylor Swift is like really Open that up, and I can see why they're taking advantage of it. I'm not a big hater when it comes to people saying, hey, here's an opportunity to market. We're going to take advantage of Kelsey supposedly finding love. And I'm not, you know, he's happy, he's happy, he's happy. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to take advantage of this opportunity. That's what a business does. And I know that people are upset about it. But for me personally, for the personal it doesn't really, it doesn't really, doesn't really bother me. You know what I'm saying? I do wonder. I do wonder if she knows the sport. I do wonder. I'm like, you know, Travis, he didn't have like the best game against the Jets. I wonder if she can she can come to him and say, oh man, you supposed when you run that fly route, you should give a little hezzy and then Or does she, you know, come down there, you know, kind of, you know, just, I don't want to, y'all know what I'm saying. Like, she just come down there and, yay, you had a great game. He's, you know, he is, his face is, this is not a face of a motherfucker who had a good game. But she's like, yay, you had a good game. You know what I'm saying? But that's cold if Swift come down and then she see him say it's going to be good. You're going to fuck him up the next game. 
That's some cold shit to say. He, he probably didn't expect she had that in him. She come down. He come down. Uh, Jets game. Game wasn't that good for him. They still won. Patrick Mahomes was throwing Steph Curry floaters. Floaters. I don't know what that was about. I don't know why Patty was doing that. I was blown away just like everybody else because Pat's my guy. But he was shooting jump shots while he was throwing the ball like a quarterback. I don't know. Or, I don't know what that was about. But yeah, Kelsey didn't have the best game. But he comes into, you know, to the hall and they get through the locker and they're doing the thing and they talk and then they leave. And maybe he got to do some press after the game and then he lead that and she there. She's like, don't even trip, 87. Next week, we putting foots on their necks. He probably, oh shit. This country singer motherfucker's gangster. This pop star is gangster. You know how that probably make him feel? Because I, because listen, football's a, it's a brutal sport. They say it's small car crash collisions happening all over the field. Right? So you, you have a tough game. You probably want a little love, but you don't want, you don't want Kelly Kapowski saved by the bell cheerleader energy. Yay, you can do it. You're going to do it next week. But just imagine, them pussy motherfuckers going to get it next week. Oh, my God, I love you. But I do wonder if she knows the game. And I think it's great. I think it's great for football, to be honest with you. They need that. They need that. I, I, you know, yeah, football needs that. It's cool. We got to let it ride. Um, let me see. How long have I been talking? 51 minutes. Do I got something else I want to talk about that I'm talking about? Besides Patrick Mahomes throwing fucking floaters all motherfucking night. I don't know what the fuck that motherfucker was doing against the Jets. Who? That's my guy, right? Steffi's my guy. Steph Curry's my guy. Patty's my guy. I get it. Both of them light skin. No judgment. But listen. Patty was throwing them floaters. I don't know what the fuck was going on. He was doing things. You know, everybody have an off night. You know what I'm saying? Everybody have an off night. I have an off night, you know. You know, if I don't play the right type of love making music like Kenny G. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. If I don't play that right at the right type of volume, I won't be able to do what I need to do in the bedroom. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So you can have off games and you just got to rebound. Do the things that you do to get back to doing what you do. And that's a life lesson for everything. You know what I'm saying? You have a bad day. You try to find the things that you do enjoy to pull yourself out of that bad mood. Sometimes I just let myself go through it. If I'm in a bad mood, let the day roll through. That was just a bad day. I wake up, hit them with the reset, and try to do the things that I want to do that day. That's going to bring a smile to old Shade's face. Now I am out. I want to say thank you for listening to Seasonable Clout. If you get some time, go back, check out some of those previous episodes. Subscribe, rate, Share. All right. Subscribe, rate, and share. You can find me on Twitter. Oh, sorry. You can find me on X, Thaddeus Shade. You can find me on the IG at Thad.shade. Um, I'm on Facebook, whatever. And then I'm on threads, but you know. Y'all know how, you know, Threads had it. I think they got it. They might still have a shot, but you know how it was. Threads was new, was popping. Now, you know, you see what's going on. But I'm Thaddeus Shade. Y'all have a uh, good day, good night, good tomorrow, good tomorrow night. Man, (laughs) you are in a court of law. There are a lot of people in here. We can't hear you. Your Honor, you're going to have to make them speak up. What does GTD stand for? Got the draws, okay? (laughs) Okay.